Hello ladies and gentlemen and Steve. This is Mike here at Gay from Scratch and today we are talking about Phaser. Phaser is perhaps my favorite HTML5 game framework. Uh, I think that's fair to say. It is an open source project and it provides pretty much all of the underlying functionality you need to create a game using JavaScript or TypeScript, a 2D game that is. Uh, so you've got input handling, you've got physics, you've got audio, you've got scene management. Uh, basically, if it's part of what you need to create a 2D game, Phaser has it, except for a level editor. And there's one available for that as well, which we'll cover at some point in the future. But Phaser 3.18, what is this release all about? Well, Phaser 3 was released uh, about a year back, I think now, and since then we've seen incremental improvements. And this is another one of those improvements. The focus here was definitely around the idea of the input system. The underlying input handling system was rewritten as part of this release. And the coolest thing about all of that is that it brought me this example. And using this example, I can showcase my amazing musical abilities to all of you. Now, this example here showcases multi-touch, and I'm using a mouse, so I'm not going to showcase it that well. But here we go. And that is the extent of my musical ability. Bonus point if you recognize the song that I was playing. I learned that on the recorder some many decades ago and I have never forgotten it. Anyways, on to Phaser 3.18 and what it's all about. This is coming from the Phaser blog. We're just gonna go through this part right here. There are full details. I'm going to link to this available down below. So if you want more details, do check out the linked article. I will link to everything relevant that we are talking about in this video. So you see here, after a month of hard work, we're very happy to announce the release of Phaser 3.18. In this release, we took the time to rewrite large chunks of the input API. This allowed us to fix a number of issues that had arisen as well as optimizing the internal event flow. Native support for complete multi-touch support, mouse wheels, um, and more advanced pointer button handling are now available. The whole API is smaller and tidier after the cleanup, which is always a good thing. We've also added lots of other features and updates, including better matter physics, constraint handling, arcade physics. Now you're gonna notice there's two physical systems there. Uh, one is more streamlined, less features, but better performance, that's the arcade one. Um, just so the, the distinguishment makes sense. So the arcade physics got improved. Audio decoding events were added, text justification, new bounce methods, and a whole lot, lot more. As usual, it doesn't end there though. You will find hundreds of great new features, updates, and fixes. Uh, they've also ported all of their examples, so you can now run all of the Phaser 3 examples directly from the website. I think they forgot to put their link in. Uh, and then we already saw this example on there. There are an absolutely huge number of examples available, by the way. So if you head on back over to Phaser's page, which is phaser.io, and click this example category, you'll get an idea of what we were talking about here. So you're seeing a screen. This isn't examples that we're linking to. This is folders of examples we're looking to. So here's scenes. It's not one example. It's 54 examples. You've got 34 examples on textures and on and on and on it goes. You have a huge number of examples when it comes to learning and getting started with Phaser. Okay, so back to the release notes. Um, we're gonna go into the full change logs next. Uh, this is actually available on Phaser under the release sec, on, sorry, on GitHub under the release section. So you see here the release tag 3.18, and you get an idea of the full extent of this particular release. And now again, a lot of it was under the input system, mouse, mouse wheel support being added, bus release support being added, uh, input system fixes, input API changes. Now this is one to be aware of. Since the underlying system was removed, uh, there were some changes and some of these could potentially break your code. So if you have an existing Phaser project before upgrading to Phaser 3.18, do be sure to check this out to make sure that uh, nothing much broke for you or if it did break, you can track down the differences. Because this is one of those downsides to JavaScript is when uh, an API changes, since it's not you know compiled, finding those little niggling changes can be an absolute nightmare because instead of just saying, oh, that method's not there or that, that property isn't there, it just says undefined is undefined and you're going like, whoa, which is part of why I would use TypeScript personally. Uh, so anyways, we got all those breaking changes and then we've got a number of new features. I'm gonna go into the, the details of them. Again, I will link this. So if you wanna go into more details about what was actually in this release, you will find all kinds of new things. So it's kind of across the thing. So we, again, we got things like velocity and angular velocity being added to matter. Um, We've got those events being fired off based off sound, which allows you to do, um, is a new event emitted by Web Audio Sound Manager when it has finished decoding all of the audio files passed to the decode. And we have, oh, actually that's the same thing. So that's definitely useful. And then we have a number of updates in here as well. 
And then I believe there is another section here on bug fixes. Yeah, so we got another bug fixes as well. Uh, so there is quite a bit in this release, but again, this fo uh, focuses heavily on the input system, the input write, rewriting, the ability to use the mouse wheel, and the ability to use multi-touch, which are all definitely nice improvements to Phaser 3.0. And if you are interested, once again, Phaser is an open source project. It is available on GitHub in source code form. You will notice it is under the MIT source code license. MIT license is uh, probably about as liberal as a license get. It allows you to do just about whatever you want. You're just not allowed to hold them liable or sue. Um, then if you are interested in jumping in, I have actually already done a video called Getting Started with Phaser. This is when Phaser 3 was first released, so I need to do an updated version, and it is definitely on my to-do list to do a Phaser uh, introduction or tutorial of some form. Definitely on the to-do list, but in the meantime, this version should mostly still get you started, so if you want to check out Phaser, uh, do check out this video. I will link it as well. So that is it. That is a phaser 3.18.0. Uh, definitely an improvement. Not, you know, not a set the world on fire thing, but you know, definitely some nice improvements in that one. Let me know what you think. Have you checked out phaser yet? Are you kind of turned off by that whole browser Jabber script thing? Because if you aren't, it is an incredible framework and I highly recommend everybody check it out, especially if you're doing 2D and you're working to, willing to work in a browser. Again, it's available at phaser.io. Uh, and MIT source code license, so not much to lose. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Good.